all in. Yeah. You we got into something else. Really but it was fun. We went culture. to a lot of good restaurants and stuff, so. Yeah. Well, your show has just really done great and doing well, better. Well, it has. I great. You know, we've, uh, I guess this is about okay. our, our fifth year Put with it. So it's grown, years. Years. It's grown very months. slowly, but just, I guess you just have to Door thank shut. goodness. Well, it's very popular and it's very well Door respected. Heads. It's, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's like you say, it has built itself yeah. and built a following. Ready? We have speed. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I've been waiting to ask you this for two or three years. Uh, I was watching a Barbara Walters interview with Shirley MacLaine, and you know the old thing where Barbara asks, uh, she, you know, she throws out the name of a person, and then Shirley has to give a one-word description. Well, Barbara throws out Dolly Parton. Shirley MacLaine says, shrewd. Do you think that's true? I think it's true, and I think I took it as a compliment. A lot of people said, "Weren't you offended when she said that you were shrewd?" I said, "No. Do you, have you looked up what the word shrewd means?" You know, I think that Shirley and I are both business women. She knows that I'm very sharp and very alert and very aware of what's going on around me, and you do have to think about the things you're doing. And I think Shirley meant that with, as a great compliment to me, and because we have become friends through the years. And if not, well, you know, however she sees me is her business. I mean, I think she meant it as a compliment. And I, I guess I'm shrewd. What do you think? Yeah. I think you are. <laughs> and you know, you haven't gone to school. You haven't taken courses and classes. How did you get so smart at so many things? Well, I don't know how smart I am at the things that I'm involved in. I'm just involved in a lot of things. But uh, I just have that down-home common horse sense that we all rely on as country people. And you kind of you kind of live by the skin of your teeth, so to speak, and you just kind of hang on the edge. So all you really have to go on is what you feel inside and what your guts tell you and what you believe in. And most of us are you know brought up in religious families, and so we kind of hang on to a faith and try to have some principles and, and values, even if we kind of go by the wayside. So I just think it's just that down home uh, common sense. But it takes, I think, more than common sense to be able to walk into the office of a powerful man or woman of a movie studio and say, I'm not an actress, but I think I can do your movie. <laughs> Don't you think it takes something? Well, I think that I had a, a very outgoing personality. And I think I had a lot of confidence in who I was. I couldn't have been, you know, I always felt like I have everything to gain and nothing to lose. I could not have been any poorer. I could not have gone back any farther or come from any more humble beginnings. So anything would have been, I was very happy with the base that I had, but anything would have been an improvement. And all I had was myself. All I had to sell was myself and my talents and my personality. I happened to believe that I had a God-given talent and I felt like it was my responsibility to work that and do as much with that as I could or I would be sinning against myself or the Holy Spirit as you, if you will. I mean, that was my belief. So I don't, I never meet a stranger. I feel like the worst that they can say is no. And it's like, they can't kill me. And you know, and if they do, what are they gonna do? Like, um, people say, sometimes people admire you just for, just for having the spunk and the confidence to do it. Like, how are they going to know if you don't tell them? It's just like the movie I did, A Straight Talk, where Dr. Shirley, the character, kept saying, sometimes you just got to get out and honk your own horn. Because if you don't, nobody's going to know you're coming. You spent your life honking your own horn. Well, but not in the sense that we always thought of honking your horn, like people always hate to hear you honk your own horn. But I, it's just like presenting yourself. How are people going to know if they don't know, uh, you know, how are they going to buy if they don't know what you've got to sell? So I'm a salesman of a sort, and I think uh, that I have some, a product that I believe in. So I've just always got out and I thought, well, it's my life. Ain't nobody going to live it for me. Ain't nobody going to you know, live it as long. So I'm going to try to do everything uh, that I can to see what I'm about. I hear this a lot. Everybody loves Dolly Parton. Has there ever been one person that you just cannot win over? Oh, you know, there are a lot of people that don't like me. And, uh, you know, you are, you're, I've, I've seen several reviews, and every now and then you'll just see somebody that's just out to get you. There's just certain things about certain people that you don't like. And, I mean, I have been very fortunate. I've been, uh, except for the tabloids, which that's okay with me, too. I kind of take some pride in that I'm the tabloid queen because I always wanted to be a queen. 
<laughs> or a fair princess at least. But part of that comes from stupidity too. It's like I don't know any better. But there are a lot of people that don't like me. I even have even relatives that don't like me. But uh, you know, you do the best you can. And nobody's ever going to like everybody. But I have been luckier than a lot of people. And um, I'm sure there's somebody out there right now saying, yeah, and I'm one of them. I'd just like to slap your face. <laughs> but they can't get to me. They can't Not touch now. her. <laughs> Do you think that it would have been possible in your life for you to be a housewife, a mom, raise children, be what your mother was. Could you have done that? I'm sure I would have, uh, and I could have, but that's not what I wanted for myself. I had seen that done, and I feel like I often think, well, why me? I always think, well, God picked me because he knew I could handle it. I'm sure if I had a, uh, not had the good fortune to get, I would have been very much like my mother. I am very much like my mother. In fact, all my brothers and sisters and everybody says, oh, you're just like Abby Lee, which is my <laughs> mama's name, which I take that as a compliment. My mother is a very special person, very outgoing. And, but she just got, uh, she got married at 15. That's all she's ever known. Daddy's the only man she ever loved. So she never knew a different life. But I wanted a different life. I didn't want to get married and have a house full of kids. I didn't want to not have clothes. I didn't want to not be able to get my teeth fixed and, and get my hair fixed. And, you know, I just wanted things, and I wanted things for them too. I wanted just to, to see what all I could do with my life. And I'm glad I started early, and I'm, I hope that I can go late. Well, you do seem to keep going and going and going. You are, by definition, a very successful woman. You could stop if you wanted to, but it seems like you're always trying to find new projects. Why? Well, I'm one of those people, I'm motivated by the work and by the productivity. I, I'm a very creative, sensitive person, and I have to stay busy because boredom is not a good thing for a personality like mine to feel. What happens when you're uh, well, bored? Well, I mean, I don't know that, that much. I just know one time when I was off sick, I was very bored and I kind of turned all that creativity in on myself. I'm very sensitive and, I, and you, you know, people like me become very depressed. You know, it's like you, you know, there's a lot of sadness involved. And I just know that I'm better off when I'm, I'm giving and I feel like that I'm being productive because I think too much. I think too deep. I think too hard. And I analyze too much and I, I'd just rather be busy. Plus, I just like the challenge of seeing what all I can do. I wake up with a new dream every day. I will always be young in that respect. I will always be looking forward to the next day's light. You know, I wake up looking for what's out there and I wake up expecting things to go good. And if they don't, I'm usually surprised or you know, it's like I'll go, well, <laughs> so I guess I better deal with this. But it's a challenge for me, and, and I like that. And I've had the freedom to work, and freedom is a big, a big thing that's been a part of my life, having the freedom to work. Where do you put your deep feelings, your sad feelings? Do you chase them away with keeping busy, or do you find a place to put them? I put them many places. I put them in my work. One of the reasons I love to write songs is because my songs are my my therapy. They're my personal release. I can write what I feel and once I write it down and get it out then it's no longer a bother to me. It's something I can share and that's been one of the great things I've always been so thankful that I had was, was my writing and I love to sing. That's, ther that's therapy for me also. Just that feeling of like the, the release. But I pray a lot. I try to put my feelings in proper places. I try, as I often ha have said, you know, I don't lose my temper, but I use it. There are times, you know, it's not, I mean, everybody has anger and everybody says, oh, you just seem to be so easy going. Don't you ever get mad? Well, of course you get mad. I'm a living human being. You know, I, I work and, you know, there are many things that make me angry or mad, so to speak, but that's a great energy. I've found that anger is a great energy in the same respect that passion and love and sex, all those things are energies. So I try to channel those things into wonderful places and, and use all the things that I feel and try to keep some control and, and, and make them into what would seem to be a negative, I try to turn it into a positive. You have to look at it like that or you get bitter and cynical and, and I'm still enjoying my life. You have often said in other interviews that, um, this might be the last one here, you have often said in other interviews that you think you're a whole lot deeper than most people realize. Close people know this about you, but how, how deep do you think you go? 
oh, I don't know exactly what I might have meant when I said that. I didn't mean the, the people around me. The people close to me do know uh, how, how deep I am, and I, I'm sure that I meant more than anything was my sensitivity and my emotions going deep, not my intelligence, because I'm just as smart as, as I am, and that's, you know, sometimes that's smart, and sometimes that's not so smart. But I'm a very deep, caring, and sensitive person, and I, I think probably what I, I would have meant by that was saying that I'm deeper than a lot of people know, meaning I'm more sensitive, and people don't think that I feel as much as I do. They think I'm always just this happy-go-lucky person, and I am. I have a good attitude. I was born with a happy heart, but I also was born with a lot of other feelings and a lot of other emotions that bring me to my knees, but that's usually when I should be on them anyway. What's your biggest blessing in your eyes? The freedom to work. Biggest mistake? I haven't made any. <laughs> I try to look at my life as a series of events and what other people would call a mistake. I wouldn't. Sometimes the, what would look like my, to be my biggest mistakes turn out to be my biggest blessings. I'm not one of those people that I don't regret things. I don't go back because I've never done anything that I didn't feel I should have done exactly that way at exactly that time. So how can you say that it's a mistake? That's what God is there for. That's what forgiveness is for. If you feel bad about something, you can always work it out and justify it and turn it into something better. Smartest move? Uh, I think when I decided to uh, make the transition and to appeal into a broader audience, even with all the flack and everything that I got in the early 70s, to go out on my own, pursue a broader audience so I could be in the movies, so I could do all these wonderful things that have made me very happy and I'd like to thank millions of other people. Great, okay. We're done. We'll take your mic down. Thank you, that was fun. Yeah, it was. Oh. Well, I just feel like I've been to a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Layer on. Layer on.